design process, um, we settled on this Califont here. Now, Califonts have got different names. Um, they can be called a Califont, an instantaneous gas water heater, a water heater, a gas water heater. Um, it's basically their hook, they're the model that's hooking into a gas bottle and using that to burn a flame and they'll have an ignition source um, as well to light the flame. So we, as I was saying, we uh, chose this type here. Now this type is more your, I suppose, your more marine kind of type um, or caravan, like you're going to see them in those sort of applications. Uh, you're not going to so much see them in a residential house build. So I'll just call this for now a marine um, water heater. So the advantage I suppose with these, this type of one is they're a lot cheaper. Like this cost us on Trade Me, it was new but second hand so I've been sitting around a bit. I think approximately $600 which is, it's pretty good. They seem to have a bit more like user fine control so you can adjust the gas, uh, gas rate, winter and summer mode. I think that pretty much from my experience um, delves down the flames or not so I think basically it's a more economical mode the summer mode and winter mode it's sort of going more full, full noise and then you've got water control as well so you can dial that up and down which is can be quite nice um, one disadvantage I reckon with these is well it could be an advantage it could be a disadvantage this is where they get the ignition source from so you get two two double D batteries sit up in here and so that powers your ignition source there uh, the problem with that is uh, the batteries become flat and you just hop in the shower on a freezing morning and it doesn't start because they're flat so you've got to replace them now with this I was actually thinking about hard wiring this into our solar system like 12 volts so you could do that as well and that would be that would alle alleviate that problem um, but yeah, otherwise, I mean, they're quite, quite tidy little units. Uh, this is, as you can see up there, a 12 litre per minute, which I think for a tiny house would be absolutely fine with two of you living in there. It would be sweet. But uh, we've actually chosen, we've got that all installed, ready to go. Here's our gas here. Here's our flexible hose, tap. Everything's ready to go. So after we talked to our gas fitter when he was here uh, installing all the pipes and just making sure what we were doing was all up to code, um, we sort of came to the conclusion that this might not be the best for our situation. Now the, the, re the big reason why is, I'll just take you up the top here, that of course the, the gas and fumes have to vent, so you can't quite see, oh we might not see, here we go. So they flew straight out the top here. Now what you need to do is get a flue coming out the top of there. Okay, that's fine. It's in some cases probably quite straightforward. But in our case, because we're in this utility shed that I built, and there's the roof line up there, that the it has to the exit to the vent has to be 600 mils above the roof line. So you can see there's probably four or five hundred mils up to the roof line, then another six hundred. We're looking at a metre plus of chimney sticking out the top. And that's the reason for that is to get the, the warm or hot fumes away from combustible materials and also the smell as well just right away into atmosphere so it's not going to be an issue. So then we talked about maybe we could bring it out the side here, which you could also do, but you've got to be can't quite remember the exact number but it's like something like 300 mils I think away from this uh, the cladding which is a flammable material so you'd have to come out the side and then hook up and again it was going to start looking a little bit ugly um, and probably the big thing is you're starting to get into really custom like not off the shelf componentry for your for your vent uh, for your flue so it was just like oh you know that could cost a couple hundred bucks to sort that out uh, you could have come out the front as well, it's a similar sort of thing, you've got this big ugly thing sticking out. 
so I mean and that's perfectly fine you can run these but I just thought for cosmetics and not really much a change in price overall that we ended up as you do changing our minds and I got on got on trade me again and we got one of these which is the same thing it's a Californ gas water heater but it's a domestic one so these are the ones you see quite a few New Zealand homes and overseas and they're usually bolted on the side of walls and all the pipes are hooked up to some like 45 kg gas bottles or mains lines Uh, so the advantage with this is, so it's about a similar size, it's probably actually a little bit smaller. Um, and you've got your, same as up there, you've got, uh, what have we got, water, water in here. Uh, the hot water comes out here, and the gas goes in here. And then we just need to plug it into a socket, which we've got power right, right beside this in the utility box, so that's no problem. Now, we decided to go with, this is a Renai one, which is, I suppose, one of the more renowned quality brands in New Zealand anyway. It is a second-hand one, so we are chancing it a little bit. And this ended up costing, I think it was approximately $700, so it was about 100 bucks more expensive than that one, second-hand. And costing these up new, they're about, for a Renai one, they're about getting on to $1,200 after GST, or you could get a Bosch, a Bosch one 16 liter a minute for approximately $1,000 as well. So you could have argued we maybe should have gone that way, but I think from, from the person I bought this off, this should be sweet. And if it's not, we can. it's something that's pretty easy to pull out and swap it for something else. So we'll give that a go. So the big advantage here is this, this is the vent for this one, same as what's on the top of the other one we just showed you. But this has got a fan in it, so it's fan forced. So, so instead of relying on on the fumes rising, it's going to be blasted out this front door. So that front door's open at the moment. We're going to cut like cut a slit in here and just blow it straight out the front. And I'll have to do some. Uh, a bit of metal and stuff in there just to protect the uh, com uh, combustible surfaces. So when you're installing a hot water heater uh, first of all, you want to uh, have a good read of the user manual because uh, in there there's things like clearances, like how close that can be to an open window, for example, roof line, and so on. So you want to have a good read of that, and you also want to consult with your um, professional gas fitter as well because there is a whole lot of rules and regulations to keep you and everyone else safe. Um, so this one here is, I didn't say before, but this one here, another advantage of this one is this is 16 litres a minute of hot water that can produce. So for two of us, that's going to be, I think that's going to be absolutely ample, We're gonna, it's going to be absolutely fine. So, but, um, so if you do turn the shower on and trying to run the kitchen sink say, at the same time, I'd say it'll probably keep up with it. We're trying to keep our water consumption as low as possible. Have restrictions on the shower head and uh, the faucets to reduce that probably uh, below 16 metres a minute. But we'll see how we go. So, so we've got that installed in there now, it's just roughed out, but that there can now vent straight out here. So I mean that is so much tidier and so much easier than what we were talking about before with the um, marine water heater. 
So size wise, uh, in this case, the domestic one's quite a decent amount smaller actually. Uh, but it is actually a little bit heavier as well. pipe into the tiny house. Uh, this supplies our oven and this is made from a cross-linked polyethylene. Now the advantage is over using uh, a pipe like this over the traditional copper is to start with this here is colour-coded yellow which is the international colour for gas. Uh, it's lightweight which is good for a mobile tiny structure um, and it's actually, you can't tell here, but it's actually easy, easily flexible, so it can bend around corners really easily. So it really makes the installation of copper um, over copper a lot quicker uh, and easier. So I think price-wise this is a little bit more expensive than uh, copper, but you uh, save your time through the labour content. So up here we've got a two-way uh, regulator. So the first thing this does is this here's the regulator. So this regulators the supply or the flow of gla uh, gas from the gas bottle. So that can be adjusted to suit uh, your requirements. And here, so we've got a two-line system. So we've got two tails coming out. And what you do here is it's got a selector on it. You can see that little arrow. And you basically turn it to... Um, turn it to which way you want to supply the gas from and when it runs out on that bottle uh, it actually automatically flicks over to the other bottle so you're never caught short having a shower and you run out of hot water and then this indicates this here goes from actually a green uh, to a red which it is now saying that there's no supply on that bottle that it's pointing to so you can whip off and uh, go and grab another one. Here you might be wondering why this piece of pipe here is going down to nowhere well that there is actually just a design to collect all the, uh, any condensation uh, or any water that's in the line and that will sit down there and the gas will by, um, pass through. So it's basically like a little trap. So this system here has got all your usual um, joiners like T's. And then here this isn't fitted yet because this one's a bit short. But this is a flexible, uh, again a flexible yellow hose. It's going to connect up to the caliphant, which is quite uh, handy at the end of the line when you're trying to connect two things together. And of course, you need to have an isolating uh, valve there as well. So we've got venting in the front of the box, uh, top and bottom, and then there's also this vent hole down here. So under the tiny house you can see the pipe is flexing around with the water pipes, no problem at all.